Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. And so despite the lies that David Cameron told to the public during the 2016 Brexit referendum campaign, the result was never binding and never could be. Doesn't matter how often he said it would be. But the next one, if it happens, not only could be, but would be. In this video, I'll be explaining why it wasn't possible in 2016, but would be in 2020. But first, if you'd like to see more of my videos, then please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So in the last few years, there has been a lot of understandable frustration and even anger from people, whether supporters of the government or not, or supporters of Brexit or not. And this has essentially been down to the fact that we have had a whole series of unprecedented and certainly highly unusual political events which has shaken people's understanding of the UK systems. And nowhere have misconceptions caused more consternation than over the 2016 Brexit referendum. After all, say the Leave supporters, Brexit won. So why are we still in the EU? And David Cameron said it would be binding. So why isn't it? And these are perfectly reasonable questions, but the answers are hopefully fairly straightforward to explain. Now, on the issue of why we still haven't left the EU when the referendum result was to leave and we haven't had another one to cancel the result, it's because despite Theresa May saying Brexit means Brexit, Brexit doesn't actually mean anything. The referendum result was for leaving the EU and leaving the EU can be likened to leaving the tower block. Uh, from the top floor. You can take the time and effort to go down the stairs or lift to the lobby and then walk out of the front door. This is relatively painless. But you can equally take the shorter route to the roof and jump off. Both versions are getting you out of the tower block. Both of them are leaving the tower block. But one of them is preferable to the other. The problem is that in this analogy, the Conservative government opted for the roof because their Brexit supporting core support and backers have a problem with the front door. Maybe it's painted red, I don't know. But for most MPs who want to represent the interests of their fellow citizens, or at least don't want to have to answer a lot of awkward questions when they jump off the roof, they couldn't countenance us taking that route. And this is the thing. There was no clear explanation given in the referendum by any group as to what method would be used to leave the EU. All pro-leave groups said that we would retain full access to the single market, which is a form of Brexit that could have been supported. And had it been by the government, there is little doubt that we would indeed have left by now. Brexit would have taken place. So that's why we haven't left. The country wants to leave by the front door. If we must leave at all, the government wants us to go over the edge for their own reasons. And as to the question of why the referendum wasn't binding when the Prime Minister at the time said it would be before he went off to do things with pigs, there are two parts to that answer. The first part is that David Cameron is a lying toad and has no more qualms about lying to the public or indeed anyone in order to gain short term political advantage than do any of his successors. But the second part is that Parliament is sovereign in the UK. That means it is Parliament that has the power to decide which laws are enacted, changed or repealed, as well as what constitutional changes are made in the UK. A referendum does nothing to change that. The legislation that was used to allow the referendum, the European Union with Referendum Act 2015, if you wish to look it up, gave no binding instructions to Parliament following the result. It couldn't because there was no defined legal outcome. There was no legal definition laid down as to what leaving the EU was. Now, that doesn't mean a referendum can't be binding under any circumstances. It can and certainly should for a 2020 Brexit referendum, but it couldn't be binding in 2016. And the reason is that you can't change laws in the UK without Parliament voting in favour of it. But in 2016, there was nothing for them to vote on. There was no withdrawal bill laying out in detail the legislative framework for leaving the EU. However, now there is. In fact, there are two versions. So the 2016 referendum couldn't be binding because there was no legal document in existence that says this is what Brexit is. In fact, the term Brexit, I don't think it even been coined at that term. This is what leaving the EU is. And it hasn't since been applied because what was promised to leave supporters in 2016 is not what has been produced in that legal framework. But in 2020, depending on the results of the general election, 
Parliament may finally decide to involve the people again. And on this occasion, unlike 2016, we do have a legal framework for leaving the EU, albeit a truly dreadful one. And yes, we can feel for Leave supporters who wanted their full access to the single market that was never pursued, but that's an issue to take to the Conservative government. But an anti-Conservative majority in Parliament could issue a referendum that asks if people would like to leave the EU on the only terms that Theresa May and Boris Johnson, along with their cronies, managed to cobble together, or if they'd rather just remain after all, because there now exists a withdrawal bill. Parliament can vote in favour of it on condition that it's confirmed in a referendum. And then that referendum does become binding. That's because the legislation needed to leave the EU will have already been pre-approved. It'll have already been passed by Parliament and there'll be nothing more for MPs to do. No more votes to take place. It's just an administrative task for civil servants to carry out. So I hope that explains why the 2016 referendum couldn't be binding, despite what people thought, and why it is possible, and indeed preferable, that a 2021 would be. And just as a final aside, just think about this for a second. If we have another referendum in 2020, it will, have take, it will take place about four years after the first, maybe even to the day. Four years is how long it will have taken to sort out the very first stage of Brexit, actually leaving. How much longer do you think it would take to actually sort out our final arrangements, which are far, far more complicated? So I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, then please click the Patreon link for details as well. And until next time, I'll see you later.